Hello everyone, my name is Sylvan Willoway and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the hidden world. Recently we got a new clip from New York Comic Con that showed us a little bit more of what's going to be inside the hidden world once the third movie actually hit. So right now the hidden world is pretty much a mystery. We don't know exactly how it's going to work, we don't know exactly what's going to be inside it, but we have a very good idea and these trailers and clips and information are giving us all clues to kind of add together. So right now if we take a look at all three films, in the first film the Vikings are looking for the dragon's nest, where they come from, and they're going to attack it to destroy it so that the dragons can't come anymore. And they find this place called the dragon nest on an island where the Red Death is the queen, so to speak. Then in the second movie we have Volker's Sanctuary, where the Bewilder Beast is king, kind of. He's the alpha there. And that's also kind of a nest in itself, a small ecosystem that functions on its own. And then in the third film we have the hidden world. And based on what Stroik said in the recently released clip from Comic Con, it seems that the hidden world is the ultimate dragon nest. It's the birthplace of all dragons pretty much and that explains why there's so many eggs there uh, because we can see these eggs just stacked up on these cliffs all over the place in the hidden world this entire nursery of just dragon eggs so to me it makes sense if the hidden world was this mega nest where all dragons come from or at least most of them it's their ultimate breeding ground and all these small nests are like colonies where certain dragons have migrated but the hidden world is where they originated so right now we know that the hidden world is located in what appears to be either some sort of well outside in the ocean or an underwater volcano because we see smoke coming up from this place. And it does have some similarities with a caldera which is a volcano that collapsed in on itself but with the difference being that this one seems to be active. Or there's a giant dragon down there just sleeping and snoring out a lot of smoke here. It's hard to tell at this point. For all we know, there could be an alpha dragon in this hidden world since we've seen that with all the other nests in the two previous films. So let's just assume that this is an underwater volcano or a sunken volcano of some sort. And if you fly down here, there's access points into the hidden world. Where all this ocean water goes, because there's clearly like a waterfall going down here, it's kind of a mystery. But there could be some sort of underwater filtration system that leaves paths into the hidden world and transfers water somewhere else. They obviously can't drink it because it's seawater, but it could still have some sort of filtration function within the hidden world. Much of what is inside the hidden world is kind of clouded in the mystery so far, but we do know that there is a lot of different dragon species living here. It's not limited to singular species, it's all sorts of dragons that live here. And inside this hidden world, there is so many different kinds of plants. Algae almost, it's hard to determine exactly what it is right now, but it seems that this place is completely ridded of sunlight. There's no sunlight that can penetrate through here, but there's still light in the hidden world because of all these kind of bioluminescence plants and mushrooms even. I think I saw giant mushrooms in there and sort of things. And in this recent clip, we actually have some more interesting information, a really interesting factor that might mean a very big deal in the upcoming film. And that is the crystal that we see in one of the shots. There's actually two crystals facing each other and there are so many more crystals around, which is really, really impressive. Because this goes back to old lore about dragons, old history about dragons, that dragons somehow get their power from these crystals. This has been seen in video games. The most prominent example that can come with is Spyro, which has used this as a form of power source for dragons. So this could be the life force of the hidden world, a sort of sun replacement where the dragons gain their strength and their energy from, because this crystal is glowing very brightly. And that could mean a big deal for these dragons because all creatures need light. <laughs> And there are so many of these crystals around, we'll take a look at this shot. There's one big one, then there's several just all over the place. So I believe that these crystals will have a very... So I believe that these crystals will be very important for this film, because how else would all these dragons that normally live outside survive down here? Because these are all like dragons we've seen before. There's a monstrous nightmare, there's a shovel hell, there's a civil bag. 
there's Timberjacks, there's all these dragons that we know from outside, so the only way that it would make sense is if they have a similar source down there to keep them alive. And so far, what we've seen in the trailers, there doesn't seem to be any dragons that have kind of adapted to life below ground. Like, that these are all dragons that come and go, except for one, the Light Fury. The Light Fury looks like a dragon that is extremely adapted to living below the surface. Her scales are very, very small and nimble and kind of delicate looking. They don't look like they're used to being out in the sun and being worn from the ways of the outside world. Her appearance also seems like that of being an underwater salamander. I see similarities there as well. And her color as well. She's completely stripped from color. Because when you're below ground in darkness, you don't really need color at all. So that is really interesting if there's different kind of sections and areas of the hidden world where some dragons live and go out again and they come to breed or whatever and other dragons stay hidden, just live here for their entire uh, life or most of it at least and only go out very briefly as we've seen the Light Fury do. Uh, and that's why we haven't seen her yet because she just never really leave, uh, very limited. Uh, when she leaves. It's very limited the amount of time she spends outside. So that could really, you know, add up to why we haven't seen her yet. And it also kind of goes to show that she's an adaptation of the Night Fury. That Night Furies came here thousands and thousands of years ago and some stayed and eventually they lost their color and they changed their appearance to fit a life underground. I think that's really, really interesting. Um, we can't really know too much yet, like I've mentioned before, because we can see a lot of things. We can't really add them together without knowing the context of it all. But I am really interested in seeing how they're going to make it all add together. These crystals are... I have mixed opinions because they are interesting and I think they look really cool. But again, I feel like they are adding more kind of weaknesses to these dragons. If these dragons are dependent on this crystal to survive um, as you know just a source of life, it's kind of it's one more weakness because the dragons already have a major weakness by the fact they have they can be controlled by an alpha like one dragon come along and they can be mindlessly controlled. That's a pretty big weakness for a dragon. Like you can have the strongest dragons but if it's conquered by someone it's useless to you because uh, it's not your dragon anymore and that's a really big weakness for the dragons it's something I didn't really like because then I feel like you can't really trust your dragon uh, if they can be manipulated so directly by someone else uh, but if this is just a replacement sun because everyone needs the sun we have a weakness as well because we need the sunlight without it we would perish everything would perish so if the crystal is a similar thing to that I like that because that makes it more realistic it's still a magical thing uh, but if it gives them warmth and power and strength, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's really, really exciting. And I didn't expect there to be that many dragons. There's literally possibly thousands of dragons in this hidden world. And it's so vast with so many rooms and so many different things and plants. And I, like, the gods know what. Uh, but really, really exciting. And I just want to talk a little bit about what is inside of the hidden world because we saw a little more of what's inside of it. It's very limited before what we have seen. Uh, so, really exciting. We get the new trailer on October 25th, uh, which I'm really excited about. And I'm, of course, going to do a reaction on the channel for it. And hopefully some more um, behind the scenes stuff, you know, looking into what this movie is going to be like, analysis and stuff like that, because we're puzzling together what this movie is going to be about. And it's just really exciting to, you know, prepare for when the movie actually gets out. Which is actually not that long. It's actually like, it's less than six months. It's about five months now, which is really, really cool. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe for more dragon adventures and I'll see you there. So long, dragon riders.